International Liver Congress is the main uh, educational event uh, in uh, liver disease uh, because uh, uh, it's uh, a unique occasion uh, to, uh, to present uh, new data with regards uh, to liver disease uh, uh, prevention, management, uh, therapy, and also for basic scientists uh, to meet uh, and, and share data on, 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 on novel researches. I think that uh, we can probably focus on, on three different aspects. The first one are some new data on the health burden of, of liver disease in Europe. The second one uh, will focus on, on uh, the increasing epidemic of uh, non-viral and non-alcoholic liver disease, so metabolic and nutritional forms of liver disease. Uh, and the third one, probably the, the most important one for many patients and also for many physicians, are novel approaches for treating viral hepatitis. I think that the, probably what people is, is expecting are these new data on inter, interferon-free regimes for hepatitis C. And this year we have several abstracts of this topic showing that uh, interferon-free uh, treatments are feasible. Of course, there are only initial data. We will have to wait for, for definitive data uh, in the future, but uh, I think that this is probably the start of a new era in the treatment of hepatitis C. The burden of liver disease is oftentimes overlooked for reasons that we can only speculate about, uh, but I think one important component is the fact that liver disease oftentimes is stigmatized because probably half of it is linked to chronic alcohol consumption and also in viral hepatitis a lot of it is also uh, connected to drug abuse. So those are conditions uh, where uh, policymakers often try to look the other way. The COMB study is a study uh, that was undertaken in southern Italy uh, and it looked at the societal cost of illness in patients with chronic liver disease. Uh, and it found out that there is considerable cost, uh, direct cost, uh, but also indirect cost to the society, indicating that around 670 euros per month is, is the cost per patient with chronic liver disease. I think the key message uh, of the bird is the burden of liver disease and the fact that we have to do more to tackle that. And that means that we really have to address the issue of chronic alcohol consumption in Europe and to be more efficient in, the, in identifying patients with chronic viral hepatitis in order to prevent late stages of diseases. The CLIP consortium is a very interesting consortium. It's the first easel-founded consortium and it looks at the outcome of acute and chronic liver failure in 1,300 patients all over Europe collected just over a few months. The key findings were that if, you have be, if you're being hospitalized for a condition with cirrhosis, in more than 70% of the cases, the outcome will be good. But if you pro develop progressive organ failure from one up to four organs, your mortality increases dramatically up to a mortality of 85% with the four organ failure. At this year's International Liver Congress, I will review data presented by the FLIP consortium. This is a French consortium that has been supported by ESL, uh, and uh, this consortium presents two very interesting studies. The first one shows an association between non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and uh, the risk of cancer, even if the patient has not developed cirrhosis yet. So non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a risk factor for liver cancer. And the second study shows that actually not only non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but childhood body weight, so the body weight in, uh, in, ch in children, is a predictor for liver cancer risk later in life. An increase of the body mass index by one unit at the age of seven years increases the risk of cancer by 13% and later on when you're 13 years old an increase of the body mass index by one unit increases the risk by a quarter by 25%. So this opens the avenue to, to early intervention and to programs to reduce the body weight of children because in Europe we actually are face and uh, obesity epidemics, not only in adults, but also in children.
This year we've had a record number of delegates attending, so over 9,000 people. That's 1,000 more than any previous Congress. Um, and interestingly, uh, the delegates are coming from all over the world. Our role is to make sure that the best quality data I is presented here. So we, uh, it's become a, an increasingly difficult problem to look through the submitted abstracts, particularly the late breakers where the latest trial data is coming through. The biggest breakthroughs that we're looking at are in the uh, hepatitis C field. Um, Last year, we saw the first, as it were, tiny proof of concept study of interferon free regimens for hepatitis C. Obviously, that initial study was very exciting, but people were treating it uh, cautiously. Now, what we're seeing is really a, a quite a lot of data from different combinations of drugs, different companies, all showing that uh, interferon free regimes are, are truly effective. Well, it's great news for the patients uh, because uh, they will, uh, in the future, have treatment for hepatitis C with an all oral regimen, so no injections, none of the side effects are, of interferon for the majority of patients, uh, high rates of cure, which is, of course, what they're after at the end of the day. And in addition, there's a group of patients that we've really not been able to treat in the past who were intolerant of interferon-based therapy who will now be able to access treatment and get cured. It's actually a, a very, very exciting time to be involved with particularly hepatitis C management because uh, you know, we've gone through an evolution of treatment uh, over 20 years and now we have a complete uh, revolution for, for, for patient care.